I, 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 I do, I do want to move on to one subject because we're really running out of time, and I would be remiss if I didn't get one of America's foremost baseball writers to weigh in on what happened Wednesday night. And I'm sorry about the awkward segue, but Detroit pitcher Armando Galarraga pitched a perfect game on Wednesday, and yet the record books are not going to record that he pitched a perfect game. George, does this not show uh, that A, we should have instant replay in baseball, and B, uh, didn't Bud Selig mess up by not awarding him the game uh, retroactively? No and no. By the way, if you award him the game retroactively, what do you do about the man who made the 28th out? Does the pitcher get credit for making that out, or do you just pretend it never happened? To all those who are hysterical about the outcome of this game, and who are, I would note, more hysterical than the pitcher himself who took this in good grace, I say this. Would you rather have had a 21st perfect game since 1880, and the third in a month, by the way, would you rather have had a 21st perfect game or this wonderful example of sportsmanship and maturity? The pitcher taking it in good grace. The umpire being a model of manly responsibility. The Detroit Tiger fans giving the umpire a standing ovation the next day. And Jim Leland, more old school baseball man there is not in the world. Jim Leland, manager of the Tigers, sending the pitcher out with the lineup card to home plate to put his arm around and affect the umpire. What would you rather have? The perfect is the enemy of the good. You strive for perfection in anything, in baseball, anything else, and you're going to destroy the rhythm of the game and the human element that we love in the game. Marcos, you're my condolence as a Cubs fan, but you are a baseball fan. Yes. You torn on this? Uh, torn. I mean, the heart says uh, Selig should have given the, the, the perfect game. I mean, I, I was in, on Mother's Day, I was in Oakland, and I witnessed uh, at the stadium that perfect game and it's incredible and I think he'd probably take the perfect game over the sportsmanship <laughs> but the head says that it would be a terrible slippery slope to turn the commissioner's office into a Supreme Court of Baseball and what happens in a World Series game game seven disputed call uh, causes the game to be called a certain way do you then appeal it to the commissioner's office and try to change the result of the game you cannot do in that in the most important perfect game ever pitched 1956 Don Larson in the World Series the 27th out was made by Dale Mitchell, a wonderful batter's eye he had. He struck out 119 times in 4,000 major league at bats. The umpire, it was his last game by the way, called the strike three on Dale Mitchell. It was a foot and a half probably, high and outside. He was so eager to get the game over. Now, suppose the commissioner's sitting in the stands. He's supposed to say, oh, no, back to the mound, Mitchell back to the plate. We didn't like that call. All right, we're running out of time, so this roundtable discussion and also some conversation about politics will continue in the green room on abcnews.com, where later you can also find our fact checks. We've teamed up with PolitiFact to fact check the newsmakers still to come this Sunday funnies.